。美国是个移民国家，在纽约这座城市，有四分之一的居民是移民。近五分之一的居民是父母中至少有一个人是移民的美国本土公民。外国出生的纽约人对这座城市的经济做出了巨大贡献。近几年来，美国社会各阶层矛盾冲突不断，各种游行示威爆发。最近几个月，亚裔在美国不断受到恶意攻击。一向被视为沉默寡言、埋头苦干的亚裔，这一次选择站出来，维护自身的权利。欢迎收看《纽约来函》，我是王梦雨。今天请到了几位嘉宾加入我们的讨论，他们是。林海安律师，美国联邦法院注册律师，美国维斯特菲尔德州立大学亚洲研究客座教授，美国法学博士。岳彩伦，旅美男中音歌唱家、声乐教授。陈秋慧，联合国代表及首席行政官，亲爱教育基金会。梁瑞斯，伦敦商学院中国协会副主席。Christina Hallett， 委员会认证的临床心理学家，北派大学副教授。在上期的节目中，我们重点讨论了亚裔在美国受到袭击的近况。本期节目，我们重点关注美国政府应该对目前的情况采取怎样的行动，亚裔怎样保护自己，以及我们怎样生活在没有恐惧的环境之中。So if Asian America meets some violence, how can we protect ourselves, Dr. Christina? Please. You know, first of all, I want to say that we all hope this never happens to any of us, right? First and foremost, not to us and not to anyone we care about. But if it should occur, whether it's verbal or hopefully never, also physical, the most important thing that we need to do is to do our best to stay calm, to stay aware of our surroundings, to engage other people. Who can help us? I think for too long, and this is true for women. It's true for Asian Americans. It's true for many groups of people who have been discriminated against. We've tended to stay silent, right? And we think, oh, if I'm quiet, if I turn away, perhaps they will leave me alone. And instead, one of the things that we can do is to say to people, no, no, don't treat me that way, or. Come help me, or can you come stand by me to speak out to others who are around us? So, as an example, and I know that young people do this all the time. They walk with headphones or music in their ears. You know that's not a great idea because that means you're not aware of what's going on around you. I'm not saying that we need to be hyper vigilant and always looking around every corner and being consumed by fear. But it makes sense to have a sense. We call it situational awareness. Know where we are and know who's around us. One of the other really important things that we can do is we can take a couple deep breaths. So if in the middle of someone attempting to confront us, that's going to get our nervous system really activated. It's going to set off our amygdala, and we're going to have those panicky feelings of fight or flight or freeze. When we take a couple of breaths, which only takes a second, but a deep breath, it helps calm down our limbic system and allows us to be in our prefrontal cortex, our thinking brain, that lets us then look around and see what options do we have, what things can we do to take action to keep ourselves safe in that moment. Now, clearly, if somebody is just yelling at you and they're being rude and discriminatory and hateful. You can say no and walk away. Right, walking away would be always what I would recommend for people because you want to be as safe as possible. In the moment, if that the situation has escalated, that's where you're really looking for other people around to do their best to help you. And it's hard to prepare, but some of the things that people can do. In general, is to keep your body healthy. If you're eating well, if you're getting good sleep, if you're physically active, then you feel more physically strong. You feel more emotionally and mentally fit. And so, if a situation occurs, you're in a better situation to be able to manage that. The other thing that I would say really has to do with the after effects. If 
just like had happened in the story about someone yelling at your uh, friend who was the doctor, that's a horrible situation. And one of the things to do is to, as quickly as you are in a place of safety, contact your own support system, share what's happened with other people who care about you so that you're not carrying that burden alone. So yes, report it to the authorities. That hasn't happened a lot, but it's really important to do that. But also allow yourself to have other people who will listen to you and talk to you and understand because that helps us feel like we're not alone. And I think that's the one of the scariest things is that sense of, oh no, what if it's just me? Or what if there's something about me? Or can I be safe going forward? But as we share with our communities and our loved ones and speak up and contact law enforcement, then we're increasing the feeling of safety for everyone. Dr. Harlett said exact, excellent about uh, um, the, uh, how to deal with the situation whenever that happens. Uh, I want to maybe say something slightly, I don't say out of topic, but also I think it's important for all the Asian Americans, particularly Chinese Americans, uh, try to get some degree of scale of English speaking uh, or reading or writing. Uh, having a cell phone handy always with you in case anything happened urgent or horrible, you could have the phone to contact someone, either the police or your relatives or your friends, nearby friends. So that way maybe we could avoid some more serious um, uh, accident or incident happening. And also one more thing uh, about uh, being Asian American, actually recently that horrible uh, uh, crime in uh, Georgia, uh, six people were all Korean um, in, in the Korean background. So not just Chinese, but also any other people from different Asian countries, Filipinos, Vietnamese, uh, or even Japanese. Uh, so we all experiencing similar uh, harassment or some kind of like uncomfortable uh, uh, incidents happening to us or to our family or to our friends. So as a community, in a whole, we need to also contact with other uh, uh, communities, such as Korean or Japanese or you know whomever uh, that we can contact with to have a, a huge combined voice that might be even stronger and more productive and powerful for the future and for for ourselves. Yeah. So I I agree with uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Yue. So I think what happened is last weekend, so uh, around uh, Springfield, Massachusetts, we have AAPI organized uh, rally here. So we have people from Filipino backgrounds, from Vietnamese, Laos, or Chinese American. So they all have a great uh, speech and then they all uh, fight this together. So I'm glad to see that. Yeah, actually, I got some personal attack during the uh, COVID-19. There were so many people who wrote very harmful comments on my Instagram. So when every day I turn on my phones, I feel, wow, so scared. I cannot even image that that's in the United States. So let's move forward. How can we live without fear, Dr. Christina? So, you know, one of the things that I really want to encourage people to do is to allow yourself to have the feelings that you have and see that you can move forward. If you have been feeling afraid or upset, that's completely reasonable. Of course you have. So don't deny those feelings, right? Acknowledge those feelings and access support and talk about them. Emma talked about a recent rally which is a fabulous way to get together with larger communities such that you have that sense that you're not alone. I will also tell you to don't watch as much news. <laughs> it is really hard when you spend your time glued to the television or the radio because it just feels more and more overwhelming. 
So I suggest to people that you check in on the news, maybe twice a day, but that you don't do hours and hours of the news, because literally that will have a very negative impact on how you're feeling. It would also encourage you, and this is related to what Reese said earlier, to go about your routines. As scary as it may be, you don't want to live in fear. And there are ways to not do that. So there are stories that have been in New York City about people who say, I've seen these attacks, now I don't wanna leave my house. And I would encourage you, as much as it's uncomfortable, to still do those things that matter to you, to stay involved in your life, your work, and your community. There are some communities where, as we've heard, people have escorted other people if they were feeling particularly unsafe or vulnerable. That's not a great long-term solution, but in the moment, if you have a friend who can walk with you because you've been feeling personally more uncomfortable or frightened, then that's okay. You can do that and then share that back and maybe accompany someone else some other time. We all know, and women in general, I think are very used to, it's much harder as a woman to walk alone than with a companion. Right? I think women are used to knowing it feels safer with a companion. And so we can remember that without staying in fear. As well, work on relaxation. When you are home, allow yourself to relax. We don't want fear to control how we're feeling or how we're looking at the world. When scary stuff is going on, it's so easy to just feel upset and scared and angry all the time. And so try to balance that with also those things that you enjoy, such as listening to music or gardening or some kind of physical activity or cooking or family time. But allowing for that relaxation, again, gives messages to your brain and your body that you're going to be okay. Most of all, I would suggest that you say to yourself, as awful, as scary, as sad and upsetting as these acts of hate and discrimination are, that you vow to yourself and to your community that you will stand up, that you will speak up, and you will continue to live the productive and high-functioning, amazing lives that you have, that you are empowered, and that fear will not get the best of you. And we, our allies, will stand with you as well. Thank you, Christina, on that. And uh, just want to add in a couple of points. Uh, as uh, a old saying, <clears throat> the, the worst of fear is uh, it, the fear itself. So, yes, so um, uh, it's, uh, I'm very happy to see uh, uh, at uh, last week's uh, rally, rally um, we not only uh, Asian uh, Americans, uh, Chinese, uh, Japanese, uh, Vietnamese, Filipinos, all came out, and also we have uh, Caucasians with us and the African Americans, and so we are together on this. Uh, the discrimination is not the mainstream of this whole country of this society. No, people are nice, generally speaking, and uh, and uh, very uh, warming to to each other, friendly, and so um, this is a great country, and we are. Um, battling this, uh, combating this uh, hate crime together. We're not alone. Asian Americans that work hard, pay tax here, we're not outsiders, we are insiders. We are, we're, we're, you know, we're in the same country. This is the country of immigrants, right? So, uh, and, and that's why uh, we should not fear uh, fear itself. So it's, um, we, we are together and we, we seek help and we are united, we are together uh, fighting this. So. I guess that's uh, that's the final thought on that. And thank you so much. Fantastic conversation. Thank you so much for my distinguished guest today. I hope you enjoy the springtime outside after a long time of the winters. Stay safe and keep healthy. I will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.